All right, uh, now we go to Jane Hampshire from Fire Dog Lake. Um, Jane, uh, we look like we got a disaster on our hands. Uh, let me ask the obvious question: Why? Well, dude, let me answer that in two seconds or less. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's you have the country. The fastest growing uh, political affiliation is independence. And you can, it's the largest, it's larger than the Democrat or the Republican uh, registrations. And Democrats can be reliably relied upon to, to vote Democratic and Republicans vote Republican. But the independents swing one way to the other. And they were upset with George Bush, so they're swinging the Democrats. And they didn't get a whole lot of change, so they're swinging back to the Republicans. I don't think anybody can say that the Republicans have really gotten their act together and, and impressed everybody with their ability to govern over the past two years since George Bush went down in flames. This is a vote against the Democrats, and different people are going to have different explanations for that. But uh, I, I, I think that it's pretty unquestionable that that's what it is. All right, uh, Jane. What what lesson uh, do you think? Uh, I know what lesson y you get from this. Uh, I suspect it's the same one that that we have. Uh, Sirota said, Green said, everybody says, which is for the love of God, fight back, right? Uh, but what lesson do you think the Democratic Party is going to get from this uh, uh, disaster? Well, they'll always get the wrong lesson. They'll always decide that it's better to be more like the Republicans. But I'm I'm not sure if if I agree on the the fight back message actually. Oh, interesting. Go ahead. Um, I really do think that uh, the problem that we're facing is that they are embracing an elitist message, uh, you know, of we know what's best for the country, and that they're afraid to embrace populism, and the right is doing it instead, and they're doing it better. Hmm. Okay. I Well, actually, I totally agree with that, uh, but once again, unfortunately, we wind up with the same question. Do you think they'll learn that lesson? No, oh, absolutely not. This administration will not do populism. They do not like it. They're not comfortable with it. Uh, is it the because Democratic they're elitist? In large part, are not comfortable with populism. I mean, look, what is the sort of defining narrative of the past two years? It's the banks. And they are afraid to go after the banks. They just are. And the Republicans, who have no right to be going after the banks, right? They give them everything they want. And you've got John Boehner having drinks. Jamie Dimon promising them that they will give the Republicans will give them more, you know, more than the Democrats ever did, should they be getting into power. And then the Republicans and then the banks will reward them by giving them all kinds of money for their campaigns. How are they taking the high ground of anti bank populism? And yet they are. Uh, <laughs> You know, one of the uh, messages from tonight is definitely that the, Dem that the Democratic messaging is pathetic. But look, you know, this goes to a, a, this a discussion we were having with Joshua Trevino, who's a conservative, uh, one of the founders of one of the largest uh, right-wing uh, websites. And it's that, uh, you know, the Democrats have, you know, the Republicans will make their case. They'll say, here's what we're for, and here it is. We're going to cut taxes, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And then the Democrats don't make their case. But, uh, and the reason I bring that up here, Jane, is because I want to lead to this question, which is that, is it that the Democrats are stupid and they don't know how to make their case? I suspect not. I think that it's maybe because the Democrats are at an institutional disadvantage because, they, because the whole system is corrupt and structured to sell out to whoever is giving them money. And so the Republicans go, yeah, well, our message is, yeah, we take that money. Like you said, brazen. They go to Wall Street, you give us your money, we'll do whatever you want. And the Democrats are at a disadvantage is because they do the same thing, but they just can't admit it. So that's why their messaging is muddled. And that's a very good point, is because they have a harder time going back to their base and saying, yeah, we're going to sit here and take all Jamie Dimon's money. The Republicans can say, we're pro-business, and, and you know, we are, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we got taxes and that creates jobs. It's all bullshit. Excuse my language, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> but it's, it's okay. But, uh, you know, they've crafted a narrative that works in that sort of, uh, you know, hermetically sealed environment. Well, we, well, you know, we, and, and the Democrats got stuck doing one thing and saying another with a very skeptical base who expected them to deliver and, you know, deal in sort of reality. Is the jig up for the Democrats? I mean, how long can they play this shell game where they pretend uh, to be on our side and then they actually let the banks off the hook? I mean, that's a, 
isn't that by definition a, a losing strategy? They can't possibly win that way, can they? I mean, because the last time they won, we were under the delusion that they were actually going to change things. In 06 and 08, we were so sick of the Republicans, and we thought the Democrats were going to change it, right? But now that we know otherwise, how can the Democrats possibly win? We had one victory, big, what I would call a big victory. We had several small ones with student loans, but the biggest victory that we had was audit the Fed. And when we did audit the Fed, we joined with the Libertarians, and we said, you know what? This sucks. And we had all the institutional players against us. We had the Fed, the Treasury, the White House, the banks, all whipping against us. But because the message had so much positive, you know, pos, you know, politicist resonance, and because it was supported on both the right and the left, and they couldn't play their normal game of, you know, using one party to uh, demagogue the other, mm -hmm. it won in the Senate 96-0. We got more votes in the Senate, and we got more Republican votes in the Senate right. than the White House did in the past two years. Jane, hold that thought I mean, for a second, yeah, because we have an update here. By the way, I couldn't agree more with you. And by the way, who fought that? The Obama White House. So. Yeah. So that's why we're talking. that together, yes. Uh, exactly. All right. So, Michael, in, in two races, uh, there's the, you know one was at 3.6. Uh, uh, Mark Kirk, Kirk is now up 2.1, with about 7 percent left to uh, report. Uh, in Pennsylvania, it was 3.6, with 5 percent to report. Now 1.4, uh, with 2 percent to report. So, I mean, wherever they were in there in Pennsylvania, they their votes left was at about 7 percent. There were about 30,000 votes left in. Uh, uh, in areas where Sestak had run strong, and there, and there were also a fair amount of votes left uh, where Giannullius had won in Cook County, where he had won better than three out of four. That didn't look like there were enough votes left, but he was going to win a lot of those. But uh, it doesn't look like his uh, that deficit. May, I think it looks like Sestak actually has a better shot than uh, oh, Giannullius. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Like Gianni, the uh, Kirk is won. Okay, um, it's too little uh, time to to make up. Too little voters left. But at least. Uh, Sestak is gaining on to me at this late juncture. It gives you some mild hope that all the votes it that they're mild, counting right. is in a Democratic area. It gives you mild hope, but then again, you're like, oh, two just don't, don't give us mild hope. I know we, we know how it's going to work out. I'd rather not have this. Uh, Jane, you talked a little bit about the keep, skeptical keep mild hope alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and if that ain't right, the last that, two years, I don't by know. By the way, is. that is the theme of the evening, right there. Ben Mankiewicz, keep mild hope alive. Um, Jane, what, you talked about the skeptical base. Uh, what can be done to unskepticize that base, in your estimation? I mean, what, what you know, if if it's a, yeah, is the what, it's a chicken and the egg thing too. Is the base skeptical because they never get what they want, or do they never get what they want because they're so skeptical? Well, I think that you can act with authenticity. Like there are politicians like Ron Paul that I agree with almost nothing, but I know when he says something, he believes it, and that's how he's going to vote, right? Yeah, yes, that's absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yep. They need to be authentic. You know, that's what I look for as a film critic. But that's what strikes me in every single movie, of whether those characters are authentic and whether that exchange is authentic and whether it feels like a genuine connection and whether the even the story feels genuine. And I think Jane is exactly right that the moment that also from a pure forget the policy from a purely ideological point of view, when you sense authenticity from a group of people from whom you expect none it instantly resonates. Like, wow, this guy's different. He means it. And if, as a whole party, you could deliver that, uh, you'd uh, you'd be looking at a significant electoral majority for a long time. Um, we have a result. Uh oh. Goody, okay, hold all right. on. I Woo, this the looks like it's going to be good news. This is going <laughs> to. Um, the uh, the uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has uh, elected. Pat Toomey as their next senator, um, and that's that. So, well, there goes that hope. But there goes mild hope. But <laughs> on the bright side, the Republicans also took Joe Sestak's congressional seat. Yeah, uh, and, and they didn't win this by much. Now, here's a little <laughs> fantasy Senate uh, game for you. If somebody comes up to you in your Rotis Senate League, Cenk, uh -huh. uh, to speak your bebop, uh, and offers you, says, I will give you, um, I'll give you a Harry Reid, Joe Sestak, and Jack Conway, for Russ Feingold. Oh, no, he, you definitely I'd take, take Feingold. It. Yeah, he'd take it. You would. No brainer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because I, I'd rather have someone who. So, no, in other words, what, I guess the way to the, ask it is, you get you get Angle, Toomey, and Paul, but you also have to have uh, Johnson instead of Feingold. Uh, you've confused me too much. But now. basically, <laughs> you could say no to Feingold 
And then all three of those wackos are not in the Senate this time. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm going with Feingold. Right. I'm going okay. with Jane's authenticity. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, Jane, finally, um, as more of these results have come in, uh, and we're in bad shape now as we've lost the House, uh, the, the Senate is teetering at this point. Um, what do we do in the next two years? Is there hope? Is there mild hope? Uh, you know, you, you seem to think, as, as I do, unfortunately, Democrats will usually learn to wrong us. And so how the hell do we fight back in the next two years? Well, you know how Ronald Reagan split the Democratic Party by getting the, you know, pulling the, uh, the Reagan Democrats into the Republican Party? Mm -hmm. I always wondered why we couldn't split the Tea Party by pulling the uh, libertarians who are anti-war, anti-interventionist, pro-weed, and, you know, pro-transparency. Um, by promoting issues that we can join with them on. And as you know, as we have done in the past, successfully, those have been our greatest successes. Um, but you have to be able to do populism to do that. You know, and I just don't know that these Democrats are capable of it. I think yeah, you're right that they will learn the wrong lessons, and they will just keep trying to be more like Republicans, and they won't realize the Republican Party already does Republican. <laughs> But as I keep, is one. they don't need another one, <laughs> right? You know. But as I keep saying, it's not an accident. It's not because they're stupid. It's because they get paid by the same guys. So I think we're beating yeah. our heads against yeah. the wrong wall. And also, if you if you embrace the populism that uh, Jane suggests, and we all agree, is that the moment you start saying, essentially phrasing it, you know, that you're the party that fights the power, that you're authentic and embrace it, we know what they say about you, and then they call us socialists and then sure, bring and, it on right except no 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 i guarantee no that's not true because when we did it at the fed we did it with the republicans excuse me well, I, didn't hear what you said, I, I didn't hear what you that's said that's why they were afraid to vote against it that's how we got a 96 zero vote they were all scared there was no place to hide right but she's they, saying when they, we, when we fight we win and we actually get the republicans on our side okay that right. you know, it's, it's not that they necessarily call us socialists look all, they you know, on auditing the Fed, we won overwhelming. I understand, but that we and that's a great moment of success. But normally, when it's done, and I'm going to agree with you, Jane. So hear me out, no, because you have to power through the first stage of the name calling, and we appear incapable of it. And never has, when a Republican has been challenged, never, ever, ever in this modern history of the way these pol way our politics have sort of framed themselves for the last 20 years, no Republican has ever gotten scared of any name he was ever called <laughs> at but any point. We pick the issues carefully. That's the point, is that it doesn't work on every issue. You have to pick your issues carefully. And weed is one of them. My Dick, Ar Dick Army even yeah. liked being called Dick. Yeah, by the way, uh, Proposition Dick 19... Army's a, what, I mean, Dick Army is a big an, was paleo anti-interventionist, right? Yeah, well, he is very much so. Yeah. By the way... Uh, yeah, he's also anti-ag subsidy. Uh, you know, my dream is to pair Jim DeMint and uh, Michael Pollan. I mean, right, there by the are way, certain issues that you can do this on, but you have to form those alliances carefully and then, and then bring them out together. By the way, Jane, you know that you and I get tremendous heat from the left when we do that. I mean, I wrote an article about how we should reach out to the Tea Party, almost exactly what you're saying here, uh, because there's a, a good streak in there that, that should be on our side, anti-bailout, et cetera, et cetera. And Daily Coast, uh, their heads exploded, you know. It, not everybody on Daily Coast by a long shot, but a lot of them, right? And when well, you, you know what? They can enjoy their losses tonight for playing partisan games, and we won out at the Fed, thank you very much, against the lobbying of the White House, the Fed, the Treasury, and the bank. Um, uh, Proposition 19, speaking of weed, uh, defeated in California. Yeah, Jane, that's a huge issue for you. Uh, how do you feel about that loss, though? Well, you know, I don't think that you could really expect anything other than that for Prop 19, given the way that the campaign was run. I mean, uh, one of the reasons I was late tonight is because the website, we offered to help them several months ago when they turned us down, and we have now spent most of the day getting it back online. They're, they're going to call and, and they're going to call huh? and accept your help on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, House uh, Armed Services Committee Chairman, he would have been the ranking member. Ike Skelton has lost tonight as well. Uh, oh, uh, and uh, and all John Kasich has defeated uh, Ted Strickland as the governor of Ohio. Is that keep, right? That's keep, been called as well. Oh, uh, oh Strickland's uh, Strickland uh, lost yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this let's, is nothing short of a disaster. Let's get Tim Ryan back on the phone. You yeah. know, and uh, yeah, but because every single person he mentioned.
has lost, lost yeah, yeah. every single person. This uh, is Betty what's happening Sutton, to Sutton 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 Jason Sutton. Altmaier won. Jason Altmaier won and Betty Sutton yeah. won. That's yeah. exactly right. The, um, but they were doing so well. Yeah. Um, you this know. is what the Republicans have basically done to the Democrats. <laughs> so. You know, uh, we should talk about the effects of Bill Clinton. I mean, uh, um, he went everywhere and left me hopeful, but we can talk about that All right, a we, bit. we have to get California results from uh, somebody we have in the field there, too. Jane, thank you so much for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. Loved your insight. Thank you.